Hey there, my fellow intellectuals. Today, we're going to be going through a certain property of the Dirac delta function. Now, for those of you who are unaware, the Dirac delta function is this function that you'll see a lot in quantum mechanics and electrodynamics as a physics major. It's not really a function. If you're a mathematician, you call it a distribution, but you know, we're physicists, so we don't really care too much about the words, but I guess technically you would put a quote around the word function. Um, it has this property that if you integrate it over all space, you'll just have one. One way to think about it is that it's this sort of infinitely tall spike at uh, x equals zero in this delta x uh, case right here. And it has this width, essentially, of um, one over infinity. So one way to think about it is like the area of it is infinity divided by infinity, which is equal to one. Super hand wavy. If you're a mathematician, you're probably screaming at me right now. And keep screaming. I'm not going to hear you. Um, but essentially, if you integrate the delta function with a fun function uh, f of x and it's shifted by uh, a, you'll just pull out the function at f of a. So now we're going to get to the topic of the video and we're going to prove a certain property of the delta function. Namely, we're going to have the property be integrate from negative infinity to positive infinity. We have delta of some constant k times x, multiplying f of x dx. This is just the same as 1 over the absolute value of k integrated from negative infinity to positive infinity uh, delta x, f of x dx. And furthermore, since we have this property right here on top, we know that x, uh, we know that a, sorry, is equal to 0. So this is just f of 0 divided by the absolute value of k. So we're going to prove this today. So this is going to be the proof that we're going to try and accomplish. And we have to consider two cases. We have to consider the k less than 0 case, and we have to consider the k greater than 0 case. Um, first off, I'm going to consider the k greater than 0 case. So maybe I should rewrite it over here. But if we have k greater than 0, then if we make the u substitution, u is equal to kx, we'll have du by dx is equal to k. And with some rearrangement, if we solve for dx in this integral, we'll find that dx is equal to du divided by k. All right, so now that we have that, we can substitute all of these things back into this integral right here. We'll have the integral again. Now, we want an integral in terms of u. And since we know that u is equal to kx, k is greater than 0, these bounds are not going to change. Because if you have a positive number multiplying negative infinity, you'll still have negative infinity. If you have a positive number multiplying positive infinity, you'll have positive infinity. So uh, now we have delta of kx, but that's just going to be u. And now we'll have f of x, but, f of, but x is just u divided by k, if we rearrange to get x. So we'll have f of u divided by k. And then we have du divided by k, which, of course, we can just pull it outside the integral because it's a constant. So we have 1 over k. Now, it doesn't matter that f has this u over k argument. It's still a function of u. And since we have delta of u minus 0, this is just going to be f of 0 divided by k that's outside the integral. But remember, this is a positive number. So we can just write that as the absolute value of k. It's the same as um, you know, k, because k is a positive number. So k is equal to the absolute value of k if k greater than 0. So we have this, which is the thing we want to prove up there. So that was for the k uh, greater than 0 case. Now let's see what happens in the k less than 0 case. So over here, I'll write k less than 0. And again, we'll use the, the same substitution. u is equal to k times x. We have du by dx is equal to k. And again, we'll have the same dx is equal to du by k. Now, here's the thing. Because that uh, we're going to have a, uh, we have k less than zero, it's a negative number. When we do the integration, we're going to have 
the integration bounds flipped, right? Because we'll have k, which is a negative number multiplying negative infinity, right there, which means this will become a positive infinity on the bottom. And then if you have a negative number k multiplying a positive infinity, you'll have a negative infinity. We can still pull the 1 over k outside. And again, we'll have delta kx times, oh, sorry. We, we want to replace it in terms of u now. So we'll have delta of u, like before. We're going to have the same exact argument, right? We'll delta f of u divided by k du. Again, this is going to, and, and before I even get to the end, I'm actually getting ahead of myself here. Notice that we have a positive to negative infinity integration. But if you have an integral, right, if you have an integral a, b, f of x, dx, that's the same as a negative integral if you have a integration bound flip. So I, sw I switch the limits of integration at the cost of a minus sign. And so same uh, goes down here. I can flip this positive and negative infinity as long as I introduce a minus sign out front. Minus 1 over k, negative infinity, positive infinity, delta u. Sorry, I'm running out of space here. f of u over k du. And this is equal to minus 1 over k. Again, a is equal to 0 in this case. We have f of 0. But um, notice we have a minus 1 over k, and k is less than 0. right? So for example, i.e. if k, let's say k is equal to negative 3, if we had minus 1 over k, that's equal to minus over minus 3, that's equal to 1 over 3. So we are just going to take the absolute value of k again. So this is just, again, the absolute value of k on the denominator. So we have just shown the property that if we have this specific uh, case where the delta function has a constant multiplying the argument, we're just going to have 1 over the absolute value of the constant with the same delta function, uh, just delta of x, f of x dx, which is just going to be f of 0 over the absolute value of k. So I hope this video was informative. I hope you learned quite a bit today. And tune in next time for more videos. Thank you.